and welcome to Reality Tea Times 2, a podcast where we discuss all the trash reality TV we love to hate. I'm Tanika, and today we are going to be finally finishing up with Selling Sunset. We're going to be doing episodes 10 and 11 today, and then um, on Friday we are going to be starting Young, Famous, and African. So just to do a quick announcement in terms of some changes with the podcast, um, Ava will be taking a break on the podcast. She has a lot of things going on personally at the moment. Um, So it's going to be just me. Uh, we'll play it by ear um, with with Ava in terms of whether or not she can pop in onto an episode. Um, and for the meantime, it's going to be just me who's going to be podcasting. I have some ideas in my head in, in in terms of figuring out how to how to make this work. Um, to still make this fun for everybody and and for me as well, um, that we can go back and forth with somebody in terms of their thoughts and feelings on an episode that we talk about. So I I do have some ideas in my head uh, for that. Um, and but I will keep everyone posted with with that as we go along. Um, but hopefully you're still enjoying the format. Um, that we have right now, which is just me kind of giving you my thoughts on, on the episodes and, um, but yeah, that's kind of the announcement right now. Um, but yeah, we'll just jump right into the episode now. So season six, episode 10, something's gotta give. I agree. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> something really has got to give. Um, and that, that's also a movie uh, with a... Uh, shoot, what's his name? You know what? It doesn't matter. <laughs> I Oh, but it's Jack Nicholson. There we go. Jack Nicholson, Helen Hunt. Uh, the one where he always had to step over the cracks in the sidewalk. <laughs> it's a good movie. Um, and I think I aged myself. Anyways... <laughs> So, all right, so we are back from Palm Springs, and that's where the girl trip was, because I didn't remember. Um, I was never going to remember that anyways. And (laughs) I wrote, oh my God, I forgot about Davina. We see her very briefly. Is she, seriously, is she still on the show? Because, like... We see her from time to time, and then she's gone. <laughs> I guess since Christine's gone, they're like, okay, we're done with Davina because you know that's where all the tension was. It was with Davina and Christine, and Christine's gone, so we're just going to get rid of Davina. But which I'm again perfectly fine with. I really did not like Davina, um, so so yeah, I'm 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 fine with that. So then we. There's a comment, I believe, on on the episode. Someone was asking for free therapy for the whole office. And this is directed at Jason. Oh, guys, he's back. <laughs> for now. We'll see for how long he's with us. <laughs> but, um, well, since him and Skip to Malou are no longer together, I guess we'll see him more. But for the next season, I don't know where that's going to be at in terms of their relationship. But, um... Yeah, I think I think free therapy is a great idea for for what's been going on lately. Anyway, so it's team meeting time, and we find out that Heather has closed on a listing, and she proceeds to ring the bell. Again, was Nicole there? Did it make her uncomfortable? Make her because I, I I would have loved for it to have made her just feel just a little bit uncomfortable. 
So next, Bree and Heather, they talk. And we find out some information about Bree's upbringing and that she didn't have, you know, the greatest of upbringings. And in this moment, you start to understand her a little bit. And why maybe she makes the decisions that she makes. And then it also makes me think, because we do find out a little more about Chelsea's upbringing as well, a little later on. I can't remember if it was this episode or the last episode, but we do find out a little more information about Chelsea. And it makes me think, like, you know, you guys actually could, not to say you should trauma bond. And trauma bonding isn't the way to go either. But you guys have a lot of similarities um, in terms of you guys had had rough upbringings or maybe not so much rough upbringings. I don't want to say that, but because I wouldn't necessarily classify Chelsea's upbringing as quote unquote rough. But, she, you know, there were things that happened in their childhoods that they could bond over. They could be friends. But instead, you know... Chelsea's taking this route of, I'm going to come for you because I don't agree with your lifestyle. It's, yeah. Um, But of course, Heather is, is Heather and is, you know, comforting her and they're getting to know each other a lot better and I'm here for it. So then we are at Heather's baby shower. And again, we see Davina. (laughs) We're seeing a little more of her in this episode. Who knew? Um, so then in walks Heather. And I said she looks very cute in what she was wearing. And Tarek's daughter is also there. Her, his eldest daughter. I think it's also his oldest child. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's his oldest child. So um, she's there as well. And she makes this really nice speech about Heather and, you know, kind of the impact that she's had in her life. And she says she really loves Heather and I'm very excited for, for her. And again, for those who kind of know (laughs) who watch like flip or flop. And again, I don't want to, I don't want to shit on Christina. I think that I think that's his ex-wife's name. I don't want to, I don't want to shit on her at all, but at least Tarek can provide some stability in terms of his partner because Christina sure as hell does not. I think she's on husband number three since her and Tarek's divorce. And I think they've only been, I don't think it's even been 10 years that they've been divorced. It's, so I'm happy that she's happy. (laughs) This is, put it that way. Um, but Also in her speech, she says that Heather is out of Tarek's league. (laughs) A little girl, the shade. (laughs) And honestly, I don't know if I would say Heather's completely out of her league because there are a lot of similarities between Christina and, and Heather in terms of how they look. However... I actually thought Christina was out of his league, so maybe maybe his daughter's onto something. So Nicole shows up late, but hey, better late than never, right? Is what Nicole says. She says better late than never. Ma'am, this isn't about you. Okay? We're here for Heather and her her first baby being born in a couple of months. We don't know. Anyways. And I also wrote, Nicole is such a grump. Well, I guess it's better than her being a bitch, but hey. So then we find out that Amanda, she hasn't shown up uh, to Heather's baby shower. And Mary's with her. So I guess Mary also hasn't shown up either. And then we get a little more information about Amanda. 
So earlier in the season, we kind of were hearing that there was some health issues that she was going through and she wasn't really elaborating on what was going on. Well, now in her talks with Mary, she starts to elaborate. So she tells us that she had an ultrasound of her uterus because maybe there was something going on or there's, you know, and she went to her doctor or whatever. I don't know like what precipitated it, but nonetheless, she does this ultrasound and she's telling us that she might have cancer. And in this moment, you're, when you're hearing her say, and you're in, honestly, when she was first talking about this earlier in the season, you're praying and you're hoping that it's not serious um, for the sake of her children, that this is not, and for her, obviously, but you're hoping that this is not serious. So when she uttered cancer, that it could be that, you then think, what is going to happen to her children? Because her children is all, her children, she's all she has, they have right now. Their father is MIA. You know, he he's not active in their life in the moment. And I don't think Amanda has a whole lot of family either that she can rely on, or especially even a lot of family in, in LA that she can rely on. And all you are thinking is these poor children may have to deal with their mom having cancer. And I can't even imagine having to go through something like that. Um, so I, I, I wish her all the best. I really hope that she's going to be okay because I don't think we get really any closure with, with this. Um, I hope that she has her closure though. I, I, I'm really hoping that she's okay. Um, so then we're back at the baby shower and we call Maya. And we remember Maya. She was, her last season was last season. And I think if, you know, for those who maybe didn't watch previous seasons or uh, are kind of more hopping on with this season, Maya was, she's been a part of the season from the very beginning. Um, her husband ended up getting a job in Miami and she was commuting back and forth between LA and Miami in order to see her husband and her children see her husband. But in the beginning of the season of the, the series, she was very honest about the fact that she was really struggling to get pregnant. Um, she's had, she had miscarriages, I believe, and just, it just wasn't happening. And then eventually it did. And then she got pregnant again and then she got pregnant again and she tells us she's pregnant again. And I got so excited for her. I'm like, this is all she ever wanted. And she always talked about was the fact that she wanted to be a mom. And now she's a mom of four. And I believe four, actually, she might actually only be a mom of three because she was pregnant. And before, I think in the previous season, and she unfortunately miscarried. She told us this at the, at the reunion. So she might only actually have three now. Um, I might be wrong with the numbering here, but well, she, she, she got so far along. She's a mother of four, even if, you know, one is no longer here in this world with us. But, you know, I, I was very happy for her in that moment. I'm like, uh, but anyway, and I love her. I, I'm I'm happy that now she's she's in Miami full time with her husband and you know she has that stability now. But she was my favorite person of of the season. So of the series. Not just the season, the series. She's my favorite. And so I was very happy for her. <laughs> but um so after that, Nicole approaches Emma. And I'm thinking to myself, Nicole, what are you doing? Don't approach Emma. They're best friends, her and Grishel. What are you trying to accomplish here? 
And I actually wrote, are we good? So while when she approaches Emma, she says, are we good? And Nicole tells Emma, I don't have an issue with you. And then Nicole says that she feels that Emma gives a different Emma, but depending, I guess, who she's with. That she's one way with Chrishell and that she's one way with Nicole. Well, I mean, yes, Nicole, that's fair. How I am with, and just talking about friends, who I may be with, how I'm, how I might be with my closest and, and longest friend may not be how I am with somebody else that maybe I'm friends with more recently or whatever the case may be. I can be one way with that person because I feel more comfortable being one way with that person. So, and again, it has really hasn't, the only reason why I'm saying it this way is because I've known my, the, the one friend I'm thinking about right now, I've known her since I was eight years old, right? And we've been friends for a very long time. And she knows everything about me. I know most things about her. We can have those conversations with each other. And I can be myself and her vice versa. That's just how that is. But then maybe how I might be with someone who... I don't consider a best friend, but I consider still a friend. I may not act the same way. That's just normal. That's normal human behavior. But the problem is, Nicole, is you're not human. So maybe that's the problem. Um, and then she then says that she feels that Emma is passive aggressive. What are you talking about? So is Emma only passive aggressive because she's not friends with you and she doesn't maybe doesn't like you? That's not passive aggressive. That's just her decide. And again, I barely see Emma and Nicole talk to each other. So how can you say that Emma is passive aggressive towards you? I don't understand where you're getting that from. You're she's a weirdo. That's basically what I'm thinking is you're a weirdo um so next scene we're with jason and skip to malu chelsea and her husband jeff they go for dinner and chelsea asks skip to malu about why he gets all of these women same girl same why <laughs> inquiring minds would like to know but I think really and truly I mean for me I wouldn't particularly go for someone like Jason only because I prefer taller men with me being a short short girl like I'm very short (laughs) I mean I get teased because I'm so short (laughs) but for me I'm thinking well if I'm with a taller guy at least they can reach the top shelf you know what I mean But I think for some, even for me, Jason and even Brett, they both have this swag and they're nice guys in the end of the day. And I think that attracts most women, honestly, is this, you just want a nice guy who can make you laugh and, you know, and it can be a decent partner. That's what everybody wants, whether he's tall or not or whatever. Like, it doesn't matter. Um, But I also think that maybe he's probably... (laughs) They're they're probably all good in bed. Let's be very real here. So there's also that. That helps. (laughs) Of course, you don't know that going in, but that's what I'm, I'm thinking. So Jason, he thinks he's a millennial. And... He seriously thinks he's a millennial. It's not even like he's just saying, I, I feel like I'm young at heart or something. He actually thinks he's a millennial. Sir, no, you're not a millennial. You are Gen Z. No. What? Gen Z? 
No, Gen Z is what's reason now, right? Gen X is his age group. You're Gen X. You're not a millennial. I'm a millennial. I'm a late millennial. I'm not a late, sorry, early millennial. Technically, I believe they classify me as an early millennial. But anyway, I'm a millennial. You're Gen X. You could literally Google this and find out. It's all there. Um, but yeah. <laughs> um, so then Chelsea, oh Lord, Chelsea brings up Brie with Jason. And I, I first of all, I don't know why Chelsea would bring Brie up only, like, with, I guess, her dynamics with, with Brie, because the problem is, Chelsea, is your, your reasons for not, you're not getting along with Brie has nothing to do with office dynamics, which is something that she says is that the office dynamics need change. But that your reasons for not getting along with each other has nothing to do with office dynamics. If something were to happen in the office, that's one thing. But you're bringing things up that didn't happen in the office and then saying, well, office dynamics need to change. No, how about you just be a better person? How about you stop being a shit person? And that would help in terms of the office dynamics. Like, that's my thing. But at the same time, what I can understand her bringing up is, yes, the office dynamics need to change. And Mary's not helping with that. Mary's not being a proper manager. Mary's not doing her job as manager. That needs to change. That I can get behind. But don't bring Brie up and think that that's going to make a difference because your issues with Brie have nothing to do with the office dynamics. It has everything to do with that you are, you, something's going on in your head in terms of why Brie lives the life that she does, but that is her personal life and you're attacking her personal life. So anyways, <laughs> I, I didn't quite understand her, her issues there, but Anyway, that is the end of episode 10. We're going to take a quick break and then we will jump into episode 11. All right, so we're back and we're going to jump right into season six episode 11 it's not worth it <laughs> i agree it's really not worth it anyway so we're with mary and jason and they're having a talk about conflicts in the office again jason feels that nicole and chrishell will let this go I don't know about that. Sir, I don't know about that. I really don't know if Nicole and Chriselle are going to let this go because they haven't let it go thus far. And then it got to a point where now Chriselle is accusing Nicole of being a drug addict and doing ecstasy and mushrooms and God knows what else. So, no, Jason, they're not going to let it go. And again, I feel like you are trying to be dismissive of this whole situation, no different than Mary's doing, and this needs to be addressed. They're not going to get over it. Men. Anyway. Um, then we're with Emma and Chelsea, and they're going to the beach. And here comes this conversation that I was talking about in uh, uh, the other half of the episode. And Chelsea is, again, we're talking about Brie. And 
I wrote that, Chelsea, you're not giving Brie a chance. You need to give Brie a chance. You don't, and again, I said this in the my pre- the previous episode, which was on Friday, was that you don't have to like what she is doing in her personal life. You can disagree with all of that, and that's okay. I I I don't particularly agree with her choices of having a child with a man who already had. 10 other children and who we already know really was not either seeing his children with Mariah Carey or at least financially supporting his children. And, you know, he wasn't present for them as much as maybe he was before he had so many children, right? You, I don't agree with it either. However, I don't have to agree with it. I don't, but that doesn't take away from the fact that I actually really like Brie. So why can't she look past just because it doesn't make sense to her? So then Chelsea starts to talk to us about her home life. And she says that, you know, as we know, she's from England. Um, and her, I think she does mention to us that she, her family is Nigerian and she says that her mom, in order to support her family, decided to move to the States on her own and work and that she had been there on her own for years without her children I believe her and and her father were still together. Um, she was doing this, this staying in the States by herself. And because of this, there was a divide in the family. Chelsea didn't see her mom very much. She says she actually didn't speak to her mom maybe as much as she would have liked. And she is telling us that, you know, this did affect her that not having her mom around when she needed her mom around for moments in her life where you need your mom, for example, I think she does actually say like, you know, without really coming out, I guess, and saying it was that, you know, you need your mom for moments. Like if as a woman, if you get your period for the first time and you need your mom and because your dad isn't going to really understand what you are going through right now, because he hasn't gone through that himself and she really wanted her mom there and and i get that because like i can't imagine if i didn't have my mom when that started for me and if i only had my dad my dad are clueless <laughs> i think most men are when it comes to that you know and you really need your mom so i you can start to understand kind of where 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 Chelsea is coming from because she's saying that why would you have a child with a man when you know he can't be active in that child's life? Maybe you're okay with it, but maybe your child won't be okay with it. So you can start to really understand where she's coming from with with this and i i i get her i understand her a lot more by finding this out however it still doesn't take away from the fact that you could have handled the situation with brie a lot better than you did. You know what I mean? She, you, I think if you could have sat down and had a conversation with Brie and say, listen, 
this is why I think the way I do. I'm sorry if that's coming across as me being bitchy and mean and rude to you. This is just how, this is how my mind is thinking. And maybe I am, you know, putting how I feel about my life onto how I feel about your life decisions. And we're human, that happens. It's not to say that those things don't happen. However, you need to then realize when it happens, you have to address that. And you have to apologize. Because Brie can't predict the future. No one can predict the future. No one knows what's going to happen in 10, 20 years from now when Nick Cannon has decided to stop having children. Because honestly, I'm not confident he stopped having children. I'm sure he's going to have more. We don't know what's going to happen. And we don't know what is going to happen in terms of how he's going to take care of these children in all moments of their life. That when they're a baby, when they're a toddler, when they're older children, when they're teenagers, when they're adults, we don't know how he's going to handle those situations. And Brie can't predict that. And I can understand from Brie's perspective is I got this on my own, whether he's here or not. I'm going to do well for my child, no matter what he's doing. I got this. I don't need him to be there. I want him to be there. And I want him to want to be there. But I got this either way. So I understand where Bree's coming from. But at the same time, I can also understand where Chelsea's coming from and saying, but you don't know what your child needs nor wants. But again, no one can predict that. No one can predict that. I can't predict that, you know, God forbid, knock on wood, I have children with my partner and then God forbid something happens and we break up and that, you know, messes up our di- our family dynamic. I can't predict that. I'm not going in thinking, okay, we're going to break up after child number three or something. And then, you know, that's going to fuck up our family dynamic. I'm not predicting that. And God, I'm not, I'm hoping that doesn't happen. But at the end of the day, I'm in the moment of I'm in love with my partner. I want to have a family with my partner. And we're going to be together throughout that. I want my children to see their parents together. That's what I'm going into. But again, you can never predict what's going to happen in the future. And you know, I, I it's hard to, to, to go there because at the same time you say, well, you look at the past behaviors of that person and you just figure, well, relevant future behavior is, or I think, uh, I'm using a Dr. Philism here, uh, future behavior is predicted by relevant past behavior. And in this case, the relevant past behavior is Nick Cannon having, having, uh, I think at this point, was it 10, 9 or 10 children before Bree's child? Well, that's not going to stop. It's not going to stop, right? So, you know, you look at that and you're just like, well, you know, right? So I get all aspects of it, but at the end of the day, like, it is Bree's life. That is Bree's child. Brie knows what is right for her child. Brie knows Nick Cannon. And if she trusted him enough to have a child with him, then who are we to say any differently, I guess. But I'm going to come off that soapbox now (laughs) and move on. So, guys, back at the penthouse. (laughs) And it's done. Great. Great. Yay. <laughs> um, and then we're with Chris Shell and G Flip. And the only thing I'm going to say about this segment with, with this is apparently 
Chriselle, I believe, called G Flip G Cheeky. Okay. <laughs> let's just let's just leave their name as is, please. <laughs> we I have to remember these people's names. This is let's leave their name to G Flip. Anyways. Penthouse launch event. So we're seeing this kind of end of season event. This is a kind of something they do, I think, pretty much every season at this point. They do this end of season event. And um, this event is now this finally finished penthouse. And we see that the OC cast is present at this event. Fuck. I was not thrilled to see at least one of those people. I can't remember his name now because I really don't care. But you remember this one guy? He was a complete asshole. And he had the mom who was just so pretentious. And he's also kind of pretentious. Brown haired guy. I don't remember his name. Don't like him though. Anyways, <laughs> that we will cover that show when that show comes back. But then I'm thinking when we see them, oh, there's going to be a new season soon, right? We're going to see a new season soon. Please. I, 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 I want to see the drama with Alex and Brittany Snow's ex husband now that they're not together. I want to see this. I'm ready. Bring it to me. Um, but I, I see them and I'm thinking, okay, new season's coming because last time we saw them, we had a whole new series. So I'm thinking, okay, they're coming very soon. And we see Jason and Skip to Malou. And you can kind of see that Skip to Malou is very uncomfortable in this moment because Jason is talking to Rochelle. I would be also very uncomfortable in this moment because I'm thinking to myself, that is the woman that my boyfriend is, we'll say is, but we're going to say he probably, to her, was very much in love with and was very serious with and was going to have children with. I would also be very um, uncomfortable in that moment as well. So then... Heather is going to talk to Chelsea and then Brie comes over and we know that this is going to be the knockout drag out that we've been waiting for between these two people and they talk about this tension, these issues that they're having and someone calls somebody two-faced. <laughs> and I'm going to probably say the person who's calling someone two-faced is Brie calling Chelsea two-faced. And again, this is just, I feel like there was just a missed opportunity between these two women that they could have been friends. They could have gone along. But, okay. And then they do talk about the fact that Okay, actually, I know what happens now. Again, guys, as I go, I get refreshed. <laughs> What's going on? So Chelsea, I think, called Heather Two-Faced because they're talking about the fact that um, Chelsea was mad at Heather for telling Brie that Chelsea was talking shit. So that's what happened. And Heather is kind of saying like, yeah, I did. I did tell her. I didn't think I was doing anything wrong. Of course I told her. Because you're talking shit to everybody else, so why shouldn't I tell her? You know, because you kind of the vibe you're getting from her. So then after that situation, Heather leaves because now Brie and Chelsea are going to talk. And Brie says to Chelsea that you're judging my lifestyle. And that is so true. And um, you, you can't judge someone on the choices they have made. Because at the end of the day, you're not hurting me. 
that's a thing. I don't agree with her choices. But girl, you're not hurting me. I don't care. You're not hurting me. And I think that's just what Chelsea needs to understand is I don't like it. But you know what? It's your life, your choices. You're not hurting me. That's not my child. That's your child. So you're going to have to deal with that if they're hurt by their father not being a good father in their life. That's, that, that's you. You got to deal with that. And I, I don't know why Chelsea has to give such energy to something that is not her business. Again, this is a TV show, but that's what I'm trying to get at. Like, I just, I don't understand why you have to, you know, create such, such an issue. And Chriselle tells Mary that she thinks that the penthouse is overpriced. And now I think there was some conversation about this uh, previously that, um, they are kind of overpricing, potentially overpricing this, um, because I think they were saying usually high rise buildings like this don't usually go for the amount that they were going for in the area that they're, they were looking at. And I remember actually from a, an episode of, um, million dollar listing LA there was a very similar situation with that as well where this was a high-rise building the apartment was amazing uh lots of square footage and stuff like that but again it was also very niche of a listing because this for some reason I think that listing was very much Barbie themed something had something something to do with Barbie and but because of that, they were overpricing it and it just wasn't selling. Like, I think she wanted it like a 10 million and he is like, no, that's, that's probably too high. But you know what? Because it's also a sentimental value for me because his grandma lived in that same building. He was doing it and it was like, well, you're not going to sell it if it's overpriced. And this is kind of a similar situation. It kind of reminded me of that. And it's like, if it's overpriced, you know, and again, this unit is actually more modern than that one was. And it was newly refer like newly um, renovated and everything like that. So I'm thinking to myself, like, if it really truly is overpriced, then you're not going to get anybody. And that's what Chrishell is saying as well, is that there are, there's not going to be any potential um, buyers for this. And Mary breaks down, starts crying some more. And basically, guys, that is the end of the, the episode, end of the season. We did it. Um, I also think that there was a very quick thing between Grishel and, and G Flip where I think G Flip was going to be leaving. I don't know if they were going back to Australia. I think they actually were going back to Australia. So Chrishell was a, was sad because they're leaving and she wants to be with them. And she was contemplating on whether or not she should take a break from real estate and go back to Australia with them. Um, I think she might have actually had a conversation with Emma about that and just saying, you know, just do it. And it kind of reminded me again of last season, again, who, I can't remember her name, but there was a, a, a woman on last season who was with a guy from the UK and you kind of see her going to the airport to go to visit him. And then we never see her again. <laughs> so it made me think of that and thinking, Oh, is she going to leave? And then, can I maybe be done with the show? No, she's not. So if she ends up going to Australia to see G Flip, I don't know. But we see that a new season was already recorded and we got to see a little sneak peek of the new season. And it, guys, it looks so good. It looks juicy. It looks just drama filled. So I'm excited for that. 
we will cover it whenever it does get announced. If it's going to be anything similar to what they did with season, I believe, four and five, that was filmed back to back. So it's probably they did a similar thing um, with this where they filmed season uh, six and season seven back to back. So we will be seeing that. And whenever that does come back, we will cover that season. So that is the end. And like I said, um, you'll be getting you'll be getting B90 on Wednesday, and then you will get our new binge, Young, Famous, and African, on Friday. So I think we will end up doing episode one and two of season two of Young, Famous, and African. So if you haven't watched it and you want to watch before the podcast, go ahead and watch that. There will be a season one highlight that is done before. So there will be that as well. And uh, so if you don't want to watch season one, no worries. I do cover um, a lot of the highlights that will make sense for season two. But again, if you do want to watch season one before watching season two, it, it is a pretty quick watch. There is only seven episodes in season one, and I was able to watch it an entire weekend. <laughs> Somehow, some way I was able to do that. So you can do that if you so choose. Um, but again, there will be a highlight of season one in the first first half of the episode. And then we will get into season one and uh, sorry, episode one and episode two of season two. So that's it for me here. If you liked what you heard, please rate, subscribe, and review on your favorite podcast app. You can subscribe slash follow on any app that you have, whether that's Stitcher, or TuneIn, or whatever your favorite podcast app is. You can rate and review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. So any reviews that you have, please, 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 it helps. <laughs> We'd greatly appreciate it. Uh, you can also listen to the podcast on YouTube at Reality T Times 2. The link and information for that will be in our show notes. You can also visit our website. Again, just a starter website that we have has all our episodes on that website. You can listen to our episodes there as well. And it can also link you to the social account, social media accounts that we have, which again, you can reach out to us on our social media accounts. We are currently on Facebook and Instagram at reality T times two. Um, so again, you can follow us there. We any updates we have will be um when it comes to the episodes will be on our social media accounts. You can message us, send direct messages. We will we will answer you for sure. So please, by all means, that's the best place where you can reach us. Uh, you can also email us at realityt times two at hotmail.com. That email is also going to be in our show notes. You can email us there as well. So again, I think that's it for Selling Sunset season six. It was a great season. It was so much fun. Um, so yeah, we will be back with a new Netflix binge, Young Famous and African, starting next Friday. Thank you guys. Bye.